Hi guys, welcome to oh, welcome back to uh, get ready for theme B for the Thursday's exam on religion, uh, religions themes, the AQA paper. Uh, I've already got some of the stuff set up, so we don't have to spend so much time. Ah, oh, I didn't make more signs. Oh, I annoy myself sometimes. Did I? I went and got more wood though. I remembered to get more wood, so now I can make more signs. I only got twelve signs. Have I not got enough wood? Oh. What have I not got? Enough? Oh my lord, I might need to go and make more wood at some point. But we'll start with the signs and we'll get there. So we're going to do quotes today, quotes and then hopefully some practice questions. Uh, sorry I didn't do a video yesterday, it, I have a real life um, and that got in the way. Uh, just stuff. So, you know, I'm putting one out today. They should give me enough time to still do all the topics. It probably means, and I know someone asked in the, the comments and was very kind about it, could I do theme C? I don't think I'm going to have time to do theme C. It's going to involve too much work for me. It's, it's pure laziness on my part, but um, I'd have to go through a lot of stuff to get stuff ready for theme C. I've got stuff ready for the other themes already for my classes, but creating new resources a week before the exam, I'm just running out of time to do, do stuff for my classes, so doing it for other modules that I don't teach just isn't really feasible this year, sorry. Long term, that is something I will look at, but I just am going to run out of time unfortunately. Um, so this topic here for quotes is abortion. I forgot that the game doesn't let you write the word abortion because I guess people have been using it in a mean way. And I thought about this last time I did the video and it's very sad that people are using it in a mean way. Or maybe they just don't want it talked about. So uh, abortion space N, I guess we can do. Abortion underscore N, will the game accept that? <sighs> no. Uh, to be fair, clever of the game for knowing that's what I was trying to do. Right, we'll do abortion. Surely it will accept that. Yeah, abortion, okay. So abortion, as we talked about in the previous video in the key terms, it's the purposeful ending of a pregnancy or termination pregnancy. Not accidental, you must say uh, purposeful if you're going to define it for some reason. Though there's very rare an occasion just to define a word. So um, I don't think that will come up as, it doesn't come up as a direct thing. But, you know, if you make sure you're saying it's the purposeful termination pregnancy if you are for some reason defining it. <sighs> For a lot of these topics, we're not going to have Christian quotes. I'm going to focus on Christian quotes because I know everyone does Christianity. And then, you know, some schools have taught Islam, some are Buddhism, so you can add your own stuff in on there. But we're going to focus on Christianity so at least everyone can get the basic marks. So, abortion. We're not going to find quotes necessarily in the Bible that directly argue with some of these topics. Like, yeah, use of animals, yeah, we're going to have questions, quotes both ways. But creation of the universe, we're not going to have Bible quotes saying don't believe in the Bible. That would be very odd. So some of these won't have as many quotes one side as the other. And abortion is one of those issues. There are not many, well, there are not direct quotes that the exam board are really going to accept, that are going to argue that abortion is acceptable, not in a simple way. There are biblical arguments in favour of abortion. We're talking about abortion when, you know, abortion is sort of mentioned in different ways, but it's going to be so complicated to bring those quotes in that I, I would stick to these simpler quotes and these simpler ideas, okay? So the top quotes, I'm going to be against abortion, and I'll put the ones I would use um, to argue the other side of the argument if you were going to try to um, from a religious point of view at the end. Don't forget, this exam, you can put non-religious arguments. So if you have an argument about abortion, you don't need to do like why some Christians would agree with abortion. You could do why some atheists. There are Christians who agree with abortion, and I'll... Sh do those arguments, I will mention those arguments, but just so you know, if you've only got quotes in your head as you're doing the exam being like, I can only remember why Christian Christians are against abortion, then just argue that Christians are against abortion, and then do non-religious believers being in favour of abortion. Absolutely a legitimate way to go. So, Christian argument against abortion, okay, I mean, we'll go for some simple ones, okay, thou shall not kill, okay. It's an easy one, okay? It's a quote you already know. It's a quote you should know for the other modules. Thou shalt not kill. It's wrong to kill. Therefore, it's wrong to have an abortion. Now, in your 12-mark question, there's loads you can suddenly argue about that, okay? It's a Bible quote, Ten Commandments. Loads you can argue about that, being like, oh, you know, an abortion might not be seen by some people as killing, as they might not consider the fetus to truly be alive yet, depending on what stage of development. Those are all great things to say in a 12-marker. But for a very basic point of view and a very easy, simple paragraph about abortion, if that comes up as a 12-marker, okay, or even the 5-marker, explain two Christian teachings, uh, two religious teachings about abortion, okay, 
So Catholics, you could go, no, easy one for Catholics. Catholics believe life begins at conception and therefore they might consider abortion to be a murder and this would go against the Bible teaching of thou shall not kill. Bang. What a simple little paragraph, okay? 12 marker, 5 marker, you've nailed it, okay? For a 12 marker, there's loads for you to counter-argument on that one if you're doing like a really good 12 mark answer. But it's just a nice simple quote. Thou shall not kill. Why, why muck around, okay? Now, this one's more complicated. Before, oh, no, no. Before I formed you in the womb, uh, I knew you, okay? So, this is the idea that God, um, when he creates us, it is not just, the, sorry, then when we exist, it is at the moment of conception, basically. Before I was formed in the womb, God knew me. My creation was not an accident. My creation was a choice by God. And therefore, this is part of the argument to, to back up Thou shall not kill being uh, appropriate for fetuses. If I was formed, if God knew me before I was formed in the womb, that means I was alive then and God loved me, according to Christians, and therefore abortion is wrong for Christians, okay? If God knows me in the womb. That's what Christians would argue. Once again, you've got counter arguments to that, being like, ah, oh, what about in this situation where God has chosen this woman to be, you know, like sexually assaulted, or you want to talk about, like, oh, the child being born with fatal fetal abnormalities, why would God choose to do that if he knew it's in the womb beforehand? Those are all great arguments on the counter argument, but this is still a nice quote to use on the why Christians are in favour of abortion side, okay? Don't forget, these are not value judgments for me, this is just me teaching you what's on the course, okay? Uh, Okay, so we've got, thou shalt not kill, before, you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay, uh, now let's do one counter-argument first from a Christian point of view. I mean the easiest of all quotes, love thy neighbour. Okay, love thy neighbour. I mean, it's almost too simple a quote because I, I, you can use it in so many questions. But why give up on a classic? Why would Christians allow an abortion? Well, they might do it because they have compassion for their neighbour. For example, if they saw their neighbour was suffering with a potential health problem because of an abortion, they might accept that an abortion was the right thing to do. If God is all loving, they love their neighbour, they would allow an abortion in that sense. Okay, That's not a bad little argument. You can make a 12-mark question. That's a decent paragraph you get out of it. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. It's late and I'm old. I still think non-religious arguments are going to be stronger. But if you want to keep it Christian to make sure you're using as many quotes as possible, perfectly good. Now, I'll put in one more complicated quote, okay? Uh, so, uh, so it is not the, ah, the will of the Father that little... Have I got this right? Oh. Always forget that little twist. It's not the will of the Father who is in heaven. I mean, it's annoying that that bit's in there because it sort of makes a quote much more clunky in terms of the exam. Uh, that these little ones... Oh, isn't it? That these little ones should perish. Okay, it's a much longer quote, okay? It's a much longer quote. It's a much more complicated quote, but it is a, a classic quote about... Um, if you're arguing, most ones are against abortion, okay? So it's not the will of the Father who is in heaven that these little ones should perish. Whew. Do I think you'd lose marks for missing out who is in heaven? I don't. If you if you know it's there and don't want to include it, you can just do a dot, dot, dot to, to join them up and be like, oh, I've skipped a bit of the quote out here that's unnecessary, okay? Do I think an examiner would actually mark you down because you didn't include it on purpose? Oh. I suspect not, but I can never tell you not to do that in case that's a mark you lose. Uh, but you know, if I'm marking it and I see the majority of that quote, I'm crediting it. Um, so it is not the will of the Father who is, and I'm I'm not working for the exam board this year, so it's not official. Um, but you know, if I'm marking in my class, I'm crediting it. Maybe incorrectly, an examiner might tell me off, but I think you credit this quote if they get the majority of it. So it's not the will of the Father that these little ones should perish. Okay, and this is a nice little quote saying, "God does not want children and young children to, to die." This quote says the little ones should perish. This could be in reference to. Um, fetuses as well as children who have already been born your counter argument's easy however this quote does not say fetuses it says little ones many christians you know you could say some christians would say this only refers to babies that have been born and therefore uh, abortions would be acceptable for certain medical conditions for example church of england would allow uh, though not recommend an abortion for a woman who's been raped as it would be uh, like uh, the abortion would be causing her to suffer just realized i'm not full screen that and that's an issue is that an issue I don't know, I use the screen to brighten my face because, you know, this is how technologically advanced I am. Um, 
so I mean that that's how I would do the, the approach that sort of 12 mark question again arguing oh maybe these quotes are referring to like fully alive babies Church of England allows abortion in some extreme circumstances and stuff like that I think there's sort of strong examples there okay rape is one that I think we always and uh, you know it's, it's a, a, a tough word to start throwing down in the exam um, it's always a good example of why would God want someone to suffer if they've been sexually assaulted however I think for actually the stronger argument in terms of the exam might be like fatal fetal abnormalities uh, a child that is not going to survive its birth or maybe not even live up to the point of birth that is a strong argument why would God want that fetus to suffer when there is only evidence that fetus will not be born uh, and obviously you've got which we talked about in the last video the doctrine of double effect even catholics believe in this and the idea abortion is uh, acceptable when it is directly saving the mother's life okay so if the mother has a form of cancer that needs immediate treatment and that cancer treatment because it's going to be like radiology or something like that is going to cause an abortion many catholics would accept that that abortion is acceptable because it's, it's saving a mother's life the example i was using in my class if i jump on a grenade to save a load of people i've not committed suicide because i've had two effects on my action my action's aim was to save all the lives i did not want to commit it's suicide you wouldn't tell my dad if he phoned and went what happened to my son oh he killed himself no he saved everyone's lives for example with the abortion if we apply to that issue the doctor gives the medical treatment and it causes the abortion but it saves a woman's life he would not go the doctor wouldn't go oh I, I gave this woman an abortion he'd be like i saved her life and unfortunately she lost her baby i hope that makes sense in the way i've explained that uh, and that is called oh, i should have written that one down as well right i'm going to take off that one because I don't think it's important, uh, and what well, is important, but the doctrine of double effect, okay? The idea, and, and that's Catholic teaching, that's only Catholics who believe in that, but you can use it as a Catholic teaching, counts of scripture, because it is part of Catholic scripture, okay? Catholics believe in a scripture called the doctrine of double effect, which says abortions are acceptable if they directly save the mother's life, because the, the aim of the uh, medical treatment was not to cause an abortion, but to save the mother's life. Oh, I need to go and get some more wood, okay? Now, I've also... Oh, so many gremlins about. Oh, right, I'll do some more quotes and I'll go out. Hopefully it'll be daytime by then and those gremlins will still be dead. I've got eight boards, so that's enough for the time being. Um, we'll go through potential exam questions at the end, okay? Where's euthanasia? Okay, euthanasia, okay? First quote I'm not even going to write down because it's there next door. Why have I climbed over here, okay? Thou shall not kill, okay? Thou shall not kill, in fact might make a little pathway between these two oh, fell off um, so I can look at my thing one okay that's not kill also applies to euthanasia you can argue that euthanasia is taking away a life if all life is sacred to God sanctity of life I probably should have put sanctity of life on this one uh, then you can't take any sort of life and that would be considered murder okay thou shall not kill nice and simple one there okay have I got any? Oh, yeah, some dirt. I mean, it's not perfect, but just so I can keep moving across as I'm talking. Um, so, the first one I'm going to go for euthanasia um, is actually, I think this one's really nice and simple. Blessed are the merciful. Okay? If you're merciful, you take mercy on someone. If you take mercy on someone, you take pity on them and you help them uh, and you do what they need to be done in that sort of sense, okay? So, uh, like, if um, someone, like, oh, this is a really cruel example. Like, when we put an animal down, we say we've, we've put it, you know, it's an act of mercy. we put it out of its misery. We have, we have helped it in a way that's shown it compassion, okay? So, blessed are the merciful, blessed are those who are compassionate. If I see a loved one is suffering and the thing they want is to have their life ended, it is a merciful act to end their life. In fact, I shouldn't put that at the top then, I should put that at the bottom because this is arguing that euthanasia is, is correct. So I'll put it down here. Blessed are the merciful, okay? I do like that quote for this section. I think it's really useful, okay? There aren't many Bible quotes arguing that um, euthanasia is right. Once again, we can go for love thy neighbour. I can pop love thy neighbour there if you wanted to, okay? But, you know, I think uh, blessed are the merciful is another reason why you would allow it, okay? My first argument against it is the story of... Now, this name is pronounced Job. 
I'm never going to say it Job here. Why would I? Because it's spelt Job, okay? And I know I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but you don't have to say it in your exam. You have to write it in your exam, okay? And I want you to spell it correctly, which is just the word Job, okay? The story of Job. This is a Bible story that suggests that um, life is a test, essentially. Now, why is that important for questioning euthanasia? Well, there's a Christian belief that the suffering that we experience in life might be part of this test. And therefore, if that suffering is part of the test, then it is a um, good, good thing. Then that's a, how to phrase this. Then uh, euthanasia would be failing that test essentially. Okay. All right, dog, snoring suddenly. Keep yourself awake. Um, then euthanasia would be failing that test because God is testing me with this suffering. And if I take euthanasia, I'm taking, I mean, the easiest phrase, the easy way out. I am taking a way out that doesn't cause me suffering and I might be failing God's test and therefore less likely to get into heaven. The story of Job. Job suffers, Job suffers, Job suffers, uh, but he never gives up his faith in God. He never goes against God's words. He never curses God and he is rewarded in the end. If I am suffering with a disease, then I keep my faith and I never curse God and I don't kill myself, then maybe I will be rewarded in the end as well, okay? So, uh, another one. This is a nice little short one, okay? Why should you die before? Before your time ah, not rhyme before you not time why should you die before your time said as a question in the Bible okay and it's in oh, do I know where that's from in the Bible I don't know if I even know where that's from in the Bible um, that's just one that's been in my head for years I'm gonna have to look that up I think I want to say Proverbs but it, it strikes me as very Old Testament uh, but why should you die before your time I've spelled all of that wrong. Uh, why should you arrive an hour before? Because I spelled uh, before your time. Uh, I've spelled this so incorrectly by nonal Bible quote. Oh, now he's looking at bracelets. Ah, oh, that's because I'm Google shopping. Oh my god. No, I need to search it up again when I'm actually in type, okay? Why should you... Oh, that's because I wrote fur, is it before your time? There we go. Uh, it's not good, why should I... Ecclesia 7. Uh, so I was completely wrong with Proverbs. Um, but nice little one um, that just says, like, God has a plan for us. Um, and why should we die before that, okay? Um, so it's a nice one, okay? I think just go for it as sort of like a classic, why should I avoid time? This suggests that God has a plan for us and that we should not end our lives early. It's a quote that's often used against suicide, but if euthanasia assisted suicide, it works beautifully for that as well. Sorry that I got distracted and had to search it up. I don't know why I don't know where that quote's from. That's embarrassing. I'm literally a teacher of this, okay? And this is a quote that you might have learnt for um, a war. There's a reason for everything. Okay. And then it goes, a time to live and a time to die. Oh. A time to die. That's so frustrating. Okay. Now, some people might be going like, oh, doesn't that quote suggest that euthanasia is acceptable? Because it's saying there is a time to die. The time to die is planned by God, not by you. Okay. There is a reason for everything. So you're suffering with some sort of terrible disease. You're going, why is God doing this? Why is God doing this? There is a reason for everything. There's a time to live and a time to die. It's not you. To, it's not your duty to question what... It's still night time. Why is it always night time? Uh, it's not your duty to question everything. It's your duty to accept what God is doing. And there is a time to live and a time to die. And when you die, that will just be your time. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, man, I've only got three more signs left. I really need it to be morning soon so I can go and get some more signs. Because I haven't got any left in here I can even take down. These are all useful ones now. Uh, so, euthanasia and abortion uh, relatively covered there. Do I have any more? Oh, no, 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 the quotes for that one. Done that one, done that one, done that one. Okay, so, use of animals. I'm gonna do the top, is that we uh, should use animals however we want, uh, dominion style, and then, you know, that we can dominate them, we can eat them, we can use them for medical experiments, cosmetic experiments. And then the bottom, I'll be doing that we should respect animals more because uh, they're creatures of God, okay? First things first. Quotes you can't use about animals, okay? 
about animals, you cannot say or you will not be given credit for sanctity of life. Sanctity of life is only for abortion and euthanasia. Okay? Sanctity of life, all life is sacred, only applies to abortion and euthanasia. doesn't apply to animals, according to Christians. Uh, you can't use love thy neighbour about animals. They are not our neighbours, they are animals, according to Christians, once again. This is not me making a value judgement. Uh, what other quote can you get away with? Thou shall not kill. Cannot use thou shall not kill about animals. Examiners will not credit it because it's not meant to be referring to animals, okay? According to Christians. So, those are quotes that you can't use in this section. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. It's so late, okay? So, let's do at the top why we should treat animals however we want, okay? Adam is told, rule over the birds. Oh, uh, no, the fish in the sea comes first. Okay, over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky now the quote goes uh, over longer and it goes over every living thing but that's the bit you need first of all okay that's a shorter quote rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky this suggests that adam has been given dominion dominion means power over something power over the uh, animals and therefore if we rule over them we can use them that means if there's a question about eating meat we can refer to this quote and say oh we can eat meat because um i'm just gonna have to go and get more wood and just put up with the fact that there's only monsters out there See you later, alligator. Um, we can eat meat because we rule over the birds of the birds, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Why can't I not get that quote the right way around? Oh, good. Oh, you're not growing, but this tree's here. Um, why else uh, can we? Uh, what else is that quote? Ow. Ow. Um, that quote also suggests. This is really annoying. How do I get underneath this tree again and look up? Oh, where's the tree bits I actually... Oh, there we go. Um, oh, my Lord. Right, we put a bit of tree down, and then we go up and chop the rest down. Um, so if we rule over the uh, birds of the um, sky and the fish in the sea, uh, then we can also eat them, we can use them for experiments, because we rule over them. They are subservient to us, so they are here to improve our lives upon Earth. Sorry, I really should have gone and got more wood before I started this video. Oh, that's frustrating. Um, chop, 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 chop. Right, you're staying up there. I don't care. I've got things to be doing, game. Uh, right. Let me out. Let me out under this tree. I've got... Not pleased. Right. Okay. On, 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 on. Down here. Out. Down here. And here, polar bear. Oh, now the sun comes up. Good timing, sun. Uh, sorry, we need to make some more signs, and then we can go and do... Um, okay, have I got lots of sticks? I've got 30 sticks. So, I can make 18 of those now. Oh, I'll make another three. That's surely enough. Right. Okay. So, next quote about animals. Okay. Um, oh, we'll go to the bottom for this one. Okay. The righteous care for the needs of their animals. Now, I like this quote for a few reasons, okay? The righteous care for the needs of the animals. This can be a quote saying, oh, if we care for the needs of animals, then we shouldn't be using them uh, to, to um, for experiments because that's not caring for their needs. We're, we're hurting them a lot with the experimentation. Oh, we shouldn't be doing uh, eating them because that's not caring for their needs. However... I don't think that is what that quote's originally intended to argue. And I think you could do that in 12 Mark and be like, oh, you can still eat an animal if you care for its needs. You just must treat it well up until that point. Christians may argue that factory farming is unacceptable, therefore. But if you treat an animal well and then consume it, that might be acceptable. The righteous care for the needs of their animals. It doesn't say the righteous don't kill their animals. It just says it cares for their needs. So I think that's not a bad little 12 marker where you can do it one side of the argument and go like, this quote suggests that we cannot eat animals because we must care for the needs of them or if the question is about animal experimentation this quote suggests we cannot experiment on animals because we must care for their needs and if we are caring for their needs then we should not be harming them blah 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 you're going to explain it you're intelligent I hope and then you'd be like however a weakness of this argument is however on the other side of this argument um, some people would say that even if you're caring for the needs of your animals it doesn't preclude you from killing them and eating them it just means you need to look after them before that point okay um, now one specifically about food okay Every living, uh, no, every, every, oh my lord, thing that moves shall 
the food for you. Now, obviously, um, obviously that um, quote is going to be specifically about consumption of animals and eating animals. It's not going to be appropriate for one about animal experimentation. But if the question is about animal rights or eating animals, vegetarianism, veganism, they could ask you a question which is like, veganism is all, vegetarianism is always wrong or veganism is always wrong. And you would have to argue what is wrong and is right, okay? Um, we've done that quote, done that quote, done that quote. What was the last quote I wanted to use? Uh, I'm sure I had one more quote I wanted. Oh, no, where did I put it? Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, so, um, so, therefore, we can use it however we want, okay? We can use it however we want. Everything that moves shall be food for you. Um, now, the next one I've got is an interesting one, and we're going to use it in a few sections, okay? Uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, okay? This is the idea that the planet is God's and everything within it is God's. Now, you could use this a couple of ways. Oh, I need to eat more beef. See, I'm not going full veganism while I do this. I should have planted carrots, but I've got distracted by building a church. Could be an accurate description of religion, that. Could have planted a lot more carrots, ended up building churches. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, okay? So the world is God's. And you could use this to argue, well, if the earth is Lord's and everything in it, then the, the plants and animals are the Lord's, and we should therefore look after and respect them. You could use this quote as well if there was one about, um, like, the environment, okay? I haven't really got a section specifically on the environment, that that could come up. And that's a quote I would use on there, okay? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. We should look after it, okay? And this is the other quote I'd use on the environment, okay? Uh, oh, I've not got God made the uh, earth and gave us stewardship over it. Okay, very. Um, uh, oh, is it that way? Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's the idea that the earth was created by God and we have stewardship over it, so we must look after it. And you could use that to say that we must not kill animals because that is our stewardship to look after the animals. There's no need to kill animals in the 21st century because we can have diets that, that um, don't need to consume animal flesh and therefore we, we cannot consume animal flesh. Why would we kill God's creatures even if we don't need to? But don't forget, we cannot use love thy neighbour, we cannot use thou shall not kill and we cannot use sanctity of life. We have to use these other quotes in order to answer that, okay? Right, so, uh, done that one. Creation of the world, okay? Creation of the world, okay? So, we've got some... Oh, have I only written down one quote for that one? No, I must have put them in a different thing. Ah, oh, there they are. Right, so, we've done all these quotes before, okay? In the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth, okay? Uh, on the first day, God created light. Okay, right. And then I would always want you just to be talking about Genesis. Okay, these are easy. We've done these in previous videos. Okay, always refer to the story as Genesis. Always say in the story of Genesis, in the story of Genesis, in the story of Genesis. If there's a question going, oh, um, like it could be like the Bible is the only source of information about how the world is. Actually, they couldn't ask that for this one. They couldn't say Bible. They could say uh, science is the only answer of how we should believe in the universe. And you'd be like, ah, no. Christians would believe in Genesis. Christians should believe in Genesis. Christians should believe in Genesis. And it says on the first day, God created light. And this is da da da. And you just got to keep repeating these ideas, okay? And your counter argument on this one, if you are going to say anything against the Bible being like the world being created uh, by God it, it, and keeping it Christian, okay, God did the Big Bang. Now, that is not a quote, obviously. I'm putting it down there because it's a good point to make. It's not a quote. There's not a quote in the Bible that says God did the Big Bang. But you link it to, on the first day God created light, and you say, oh, maybe on the first day when God created light, that's meant to be a metaphor for God creating the Big Bang. Light coming out of nothing could be a description of what an explosion is. The Big Bang's meant to be an explosion. I mean... It's not as simple as an explosion, obviously, but for the purposes of an RE exam and not a physics exam, that would be enough information, and you can do that, okay? These are not perfect sort of quotes, okay? Um, 
Well, no, sorry, the, this is not sort of a perfect definition of an answer because they can be quite frustrating with this one. They can ask this question in a lot of ways, okay? So this question about creation of the universe, it could be like, oh, um, something as vague as, I mean, they could ask something as vague as, uh, science teaches us all we need to know about the world. And you'd have to argue why Christians should believe in science and not believe in science. And you could apply science to questions like abortion, science to questions like euthanasia, and they'd be like, oh, no, religion is still important because it teaches us that what moral is right to do and it's the right thing to do so that we can commit abortions, should we commit abortions. So watch out for a question like that that's really broad and open. I could see them doing it, and we'll go that when we go through practice questions at the end. And I'll throw through a few practice questions at you, okay? Uh, so, okay. Uh creation of human beings okay so if it now don't forget they might ask specifically about creation of the universe they might ask about creation of mankind and you'll have to say different things for each one okay so uh, god created mankind in his own image what does this mean um I, i'm not going to go through the rest of it it says in the image of god he created him is the rest of the quote but i think that's enough to fit on one thing and that's fine okay ow something sharp on my back uh, god created mankind in his own image this is the idea that god created us in his image what does this mean it means we're created with reason a special purpose and a soul okay we are special we are different to the animals we have free will we can make our own decisions okay and god created us in his image okay now i i your lord uh, gave you life and I can take it away. Um, now, this is a little bit like uh, when your mother, I don't know if your mother has said this, uh, says to you, uh, I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. Um, but it's God saying, look, I, your Lord, gave you life and I take it away. I can take it away. Okay, actually, does it say, can I, I, can, I take it away? Oh, I can take it away, that's fine. Okay, this is the idea that God creates all life on earth and therefore God is the only one to end life. Well, how does that apply? It applies to creation of mankind because it's saying, oh, God created life. But also, it's a pretty good quote for abortion and euthanasia because it's saying only God can take life. So it's going to be an argument against question again, a quote again, saying why we shouldn't commit euthanasia. But if you're remembering a quote over here, and you can use it in this section, that's very useful. I do apologise for um, yawning so much. I'm very, very tired because I'm very stupid, okay? God breathed life into him, okay? Um, now, that's talking about Adam, okay? That is the idea that Adam was given life directly by God when he breathed it into him. And this shows that human beings are special because he created God with a special purpose. He created mankind with a special purpose when he created us in the image of God. And God breathed life into him. Just another useful quote and I think a nice short one. And the other side of the argument, uh, God made evolution happen and Adnan and chose humans, okay? That's going to be a counter argument in a 12 mark question. Once again, not a quote, you can't get away with a quote on that one. But there's not even a good part of the, the um, I mean, I guess you could say that God created humans on the sixth day could be a sign that evolution was chosen because human beings evolved after many of the other creatures. I suppose it's not the strongest argument, okay? And don't forget, you've been saying all the points I hope your teachers made to you that, oh, and, and, you know, a liberal Christian who believes in the Big Bang would say that the story of seven days isn't literal days, but it's meant to be like periods of time, and the story therefore could, you know, work with a more scientific mind. I mean, it doesn't really, because, you know, the sun is created after the seas and stuff like that, so it doesn't really fit in any order um, but the final bit does sort of fit in order of evolution birds and fish are created before mammals on the land oh my lord Ooh. this is appalling i do apologize i i will have to go straight to sleep after this and i'll sleep for a thousand years um that's not true i'll sleep until 6 a.m when my son gets up and we have to play trains because that is what my life is now playing trains with a toddler and actually there's nothing to complain about because I quite enjoy it it's just you quite long days okay death and the afterlife okay we've done death and the afterlife in the previous one okay there's not really arguments to have about death and the afterlife okay because it's not religious people believe in death and the afterlife okay so um uh whoever believes in me shall not die but have eternal life okay so um 
that's Jesus saying that if you believe in me, you shall not die but have eternal life. Okay, it's a long part of a longer quote. Um, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Whoever believes in me shall not die but have eternal life. Okay, that's not a bad one to use there. What does that say? That says that um, heaven and hell do exist because if you believe in Jesus, you will live forever. Not a bad one, okay. Um, you could do John 3.16, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Um, oh no, so that's the end of John 3. So whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. Um, maybe I'm getting my quotes confused. Um, but, you know, belief in Jesus gives you eternal life. A nice point to make on that one. I may have got myself muddled in there. But that quote still counts. You're still going to get credit for that one. Now, oh, I bet you're sick of this one in class, if you're anything like my classes. Parable of the sheep and the goats. Uh, this is the story of uh, Jesus tells a parable. He goes around to people and he goes, Hey, look, some of you are like sheep and some of you are like goats. And the goats do everything they're told. They're, they're really nice. Uh, when I was hungry, they gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, they gave me water. When I was um, in prison, they came and visited me. Is a nice one because we're going to use that for the prison module later. Okay, parable of the sheep and the goats. And that tells us, one... Uh, that how to live a good life to get to heaven, but for this one, more importantly, it tells us that um, now it says, then they, and it means the goats, will go to eternal punic punishment. Okay, and uh, but the but the sheep uh, go no. But they, brackets, the sheep, that's it, uh, go to eternal life, okay? This is the idea that if we follow Jesus' teachings, if we treat him like a shepherd and that we are sheep, we will go to eternal um, life. Uh, but if we're goats and we ignore him and we're stubborn, then we will go to eternal punishment. Okay, and finally, my favourite one for this one, my father's house has many rooms. I talked about this in one of the other videos. This is um, not about God just showing, uh, Jesus showing off that God's got a big old house. He's like, yeah, my dad's got, he's got a massive house and it's got a swimming pool and it's got a sauna and it's got a hot tub. He's saying there is room in heaven for all people. So we should believe in heaven because we can all be forgiven. God is all loving. There's not limited space there and we should like be good people to get into heaven no matter what we have done okay and they talk about how you know forgive 70 times 7 and all that question about death would be fascinating i mean we're about to go through some questions um i believe it was the 2000 and i uh, know it's one of the spec papers has a question about death on it which is it is not reasonable to believe in life after death mean question so if it says something like that so if it says and because that's a spec paper that's not an exam paper so it could really come up that as a topic. Uh, so let's get a book out. Uh, put it there. No, uh, put it. Yeah. So. Oh, that one's already been written in. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just go to a later page. So that was a question we did about family planning. Oh. Oh, that was in the game. I thought that was someone coming through my front door. Absolutely wet myself. Really thought that was the sound of my door opening. I was hoping it was locked. So, in the last five years, uh, last few years, sorry, not five years, I've got five answers here. Okay, 2020, the question was on the Big Bang, okay? Uh, it was basically, uh, the Big Bang is, is the like, everyone should believe in the Big Bang was essentially the question. Let me uh, write it down, or say, no, say it out loud. Oh, no, sorry, the question was, it is possible to believe in both the Big Bang theory and religious teachings about the origin of the universe, okay? I, I think... Um, not a bad question. You'd have to be like, oh, yeah, you can believe in Big Bang and the origin of the universe and the religious teachings because God made the Big Bang happen. Oh, you can believe in both because the Bible is saying why things happen and not how things happen. The Bible is not happy perfect. And you go like, no, disagree with that. And you can go both sides. You go, no, disagree with that. You should reject all religious belief because there's no evidence for the Bible. People should just believe in the Big Bang now. It's science. It has facts behind it and evidence. And we should just believe in the like, science now. And you go, no, opposite side Christians some Christians fundamentalists will be like no we should listen to the Bible it's the word of God everything out there is is going against God's word and we should trust in God's word and it's a test when other information comes out there the Bible teaches us all we need to know and, and you've got a decent argument there okay and then come down as a conclusion wherever you want um 2019 the question was about abortion ah abortion 
I don't know about you guys, but my classes would all love a question about abortion because it's a really nice, simple topic in terms of there's very clear arguments on either side, okay? So, could happen, okay? I mean, it was 2019 that last came out. I just don't think they'll do it again yet, um, which is a shame. It doesn't mean it can't come up at all. I expect it to be a four mark or a five mark question. Um, and it could be something like... Um, explain to religious teachings about abortion could be as simple as that or explain to religious teachings about the sanctity of human life or something like that or of human you know i don't know how they'd phrase it if it wasn't just going to be abortion i'd have to look at the keywords and see if they could phrase it in another way that's more challenging but if an abortion question shouldn't be that difficult, okay? Catholics, dead set against it. They say that abortion is worth you do. You're taking a life that God has made sacred. Um, they're saying that uh, you must, uh, that it's only God can take life. Thou shalt not kill. Easy things like that, okay? And then, oh, Church of England say that abortion is wrong, but exceptional in some cases. God is all loving, so he'd understand if an abortion had to take place. For example, if someone has been raped, then God is too loving to let that person suffer. Um, if the baby is born with a fetal, uh, fatal fetal abnormality, God would want that child to suffer, and the abortion might be the kindest option, the lesser of two evils. Oh, um, if the mother's life is in danger, then Catholics will believe in the doctrine of double effect that uh, saving the mother's life is more valuable, you know, is the right outcome because you're not trying to have the abortion, you're trying to save the mother's life. Um, easy peasy. Environment was 2018. Not a bad question, the environment one. I just, I'm just going to read it again because I always, when I try and read them from memory, I get the wording of them wrong. Uh, abuse of the environment is impossible to stop. That could come up again and, and it won't be phrased exactly the same. It could be like, oh, um, looking after the environment isn't our responsibility or um, the planet, uh, like, oh, it could be something as specific as like um, natural resource, we must protect natural resources, okay? And you'll do the same arguments that we've got over here and be like, oh, like um, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it and uh, creation of humans, uh, where was that one? Um, I know, where was the other one I wrote down? Uh, uh, God made the earth and gave a stewardship over it, okay? Um, so I, I th And then uh, be like, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. If God created the world, then we must look after it because it's a creation of God. But, uh, you know, I think that's a pretty... I mean, if you get a question directly on... Oh, I've got to crawl through the book again and then I'll get confused that it's my door opening again because I'm a stupid person. Um... I don't think environment's too hard a question. It's not one I would worry about particularly. As long as it's phrased in a way that you understand that it's about the environment and you can answer it clearly, I don't think it should be a big issue. Now, on the two spec papers they still have on their website, there was an evolution question that came up. Oh, no, I've done that wrong. Ooh, there we go. Uh, an evolution question that came up on the first one. Evolution proves that religious beliefs about the origins of life are wrong. I think that's hard because of how complicated the phrasing is of it. I think if you understand what the question means, it's not too difficult. You're just arguing that evolution's right on one hand, and then you're arguing that religion's right on the other, and then you can put the, ah, oh, but some Christians believe in evolution and uh, religion. Not a bad argument to put in the middle there, being like, oh, you know, the, the Bible is not meant to be a story of fact. It's meant to be a book about the nature of God. Um, evolution can still exist, and we can still believe in God, because if we don't believe in the Bible as facts, then we can accept that human beings were chosen by God, uh, but it doesn't have to be how it happened in the Bible, and human beings chose, uh, sorry, God chose human beings to evolve uh, in a way different to all the other animals, this is how we are different, that we have an intelligence that seems superior to all the other animals, and we have been given a position of dominion over them, that came from God, that was God's gift to us, we are not just an ape who got lucky, we were chosen by God, okay, so evolution, not the worst question, and then the final question uh, that's on one of the spec papers was life after death. Now, I don't know if you can spot which topic has got a big gaping hole in it there that hasn't come up. And it's euthanasia. Okay? It's euthanasia. There has not been, as far as I can see, a 12 mark question on euthanasia. There's been plenty of 4 and 5 marks that you can talk about euthanasia on. But there's not been a 12 marker on euthanasia. Now, that is interesting to me for a number of reasons. That's interesting because it's a massive topic. People like doing it, and yet there has not been a, a, a question on it. Now, I'd phrased, where have I saved them? Uh, yes, there we go. Um, 
I keep loading up these different documents to check on them. So the 12 mark question, religion and life. Okay, uh, here it is. Okay, so uh, they can't. Oh, oh, what have I done? I've closed down the game. I'm really having a day. So you guys are going to see a black screen for a little bit while I manage to load up the game for a little bit. You're going to see my beautiful face. Um, so I don't know if they would do this. I think technically they could do a question like active euthanasia should never be allowed. I think that's harsh because it's asking you to remember exactly what active euthanasia is. And though active euthanasia is part of the longer spec, it's not considered one of the key terms. Active euthanasia is when you actually make an action to take someone's life. For example, giving them a poison to kill them rather than just letting them die by taking away their life support machine. Active euthanasia is illegal in this country, whereas passive euthanasia is um, is not illegal. So um, uh, when someone is ill and they're dying, you can take out their feeding tube and let them die if there's no chance of them recovering. Excellent, we're back in. Uh, whereas you can't give them a poison so they die earlier. Um, so it could be about active euthanasia. I, I don't know if that's um, what it could be. And it could be something like, and I'm going to write this down, okay? Um, it could be something like phrased like this and it's just going to be like you're probably going to end up talking about euthanasia but it could be like um, if the quality of life is not good I don't know why I've done give the cover cheat good then euthanasia is the best option okay so I think this is a 12 mark question we're going to have a practice at, okay? If the quality of life is not good, then euthanasia is the best option, okay? So let's have a look at our quotes first of all, okay? We've got euthanasia quotes. We've got the story of Job saying why euthanasia is wrong, okay? We've got why should you die before your time? Euthanasia is wrong. There's a reason for everything, a time to live and a time to die. Euthanasia is wrong. And right at the bottom, we've got love their neighbour and blessed are the merciful. There can be arguments that euthanasia is right from a religious point of view. Don't forget in this exam, I can bring up atheist views. Oh my God, I've forgotten 14 pages in. So I'm going to have to pay attention and try not to go there. Okay, so uh, if the quality of life is not good, then euthanasia is the best option. So it's saying that if someone is suffering, then euthanasia is the right thing. Okay, so I'm going to start off disagreeing with this. Okay, because I want to get into my Christian arguments pretty quickly. I might be running out of time. I don't know. I'm just trying to save time, but I want to get a religious argument in there first. Okay, so I'm going to go. Uh, many Christians would dis uh, disagree with with this statement, as they may believe that life is a test from God. This is reflected in the story of Job, who is uh, who suffers at God's will and yet is re rewarded. Ah, next page. Yes, is rewarded for keeping his faith. Many Christians see this as an example to follow for exam uh, uh, I can't say example again it would annoy me it's too close um, so if they were suffering with a terminal disease they would not choose you euthanasia as they may see that as failing God's test. Okay, so relatively simple little paragraph there. I'm just saying the story of Job teaching Christians that they should keep the faith and they should not take their own life and believe in euthanasia, okay? Because God is testing them by making them suffer and they should keep their faith throughout that, okay? Now I've got to argue that I'm incorrect there, okay? I've got to argue that, um, and I'm going to agree with a statement on this one now, okay? Because the statement is saying the quality of life is not good, then you think it's the best option. I'm probably going to try and keep it religious for my next paragraph. I want to make sure that I've got enough religion in there in case I have like a brain melt or I'm running out of time. So I want to have another religious paragraph in there, okay? Um, on the other hand, some Christians may see this as a 
week. I'm going to have to move over pages. As a weak argument as they believe that God is all, all loving and that he would not want them to suffer unnecessarily. If that's the right spelling, I will be absolutely shocked. Okay, luckily we only get spag marks on uh, one of the 12 markers. I'm going to have to hope the other 12 markers can't be an I though, that's got to be an E, necessarily. Two C's, two S's? Necessary. Two C's, one S? Hmm, don't know. Really is messing my brain up. I should know how to spell that word. I've got masters in English. Not helping at the moment. That word just looks like a mess of jumble of letters right now. Hurts my brain. Anyway, uh, God will not want to suffer necessarily. Uh, for example, uh, Jesus uh, tells his f uh, followers uh, that, and look, we're going to jump down, get our quotes, okay? Blessed are the merciful, okay? He says that uh, during the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, you could put that in, but I don't, I don't expect you to remember that's from the Sermon on the Mount, where he's doing the Beatitudes, but that's fine. Uh, follows that, and I'm going to pop it down. Blessed are the merciful. Okay. Uh, this suggests we should uh, uh, show compassion to those who are suffering and youth are ah. hmm. and euthanasia might be considered the most passionate um, thing to do. Okay, uh, not a bad little paragraph there, but we know that the majority of Christians do not believe in euthanasia, so I'm going to have to counter-argument this one pretty quickly and say, actually, this is nonsense, okay? So, what haven't I mentioned? Well, I've not mentioned hospices. Hospices is uh, where many people go uh, to, uh, to spend their final days, months. They're often run by charities, some run by Christian charities, and I can argue, like, uh, St Luke's and stuff like that, it's technically a Christian charity and runs a lot of them in Sheffield, um, and I could argue that this is a more compassionate thing. You can show compassion while also respecting their ends of life, uh, quote, quote, uh, end of life care, and I can bust out this quote, okay, um, there's a reason for everything, a time to live and a time to die, okay, so, oh, I always forget, okay, there's a reason for everything, a time to live and a time to die, so I'm going to say, some Christians would say that is a weak argument as um, the most merciful thing to do uh, may not be to uh, euthanize a person but care for them in a hospice okay uh, now I'm going to throw in a bonus quote here Jesus told us to love thy neighbour uh, and, and oh, sorry, I've just seen this as pinged off, so that might make it the screen time. Um, no, that's fine. And uh, the Bible also suggests there is a reason for everything a uh, time to live and a time to die. This quote could, uh, I'm going to suggest again, uh, could, I'm going to use suggest because I'm too tired to think of a new word, because uh, to Christians that they uh, should not take a life as suffering and death are part of God's plan. The most compassionate Thing they can do. Ah.
Oh, whoops, hit the mic. Sorry, that might have been quite loud. Uh, they can do is to support the person in their end of life care. Easy peasy. I mean, not easy, but you know, it's not the worst argument ever. Um, now, I'm going to do an atheist one, okay? On the other hand, a non religious believer. Uh, may now we've got to look back to the question, okay? Make sure I'm arguing the answer to the question, okay? If quality of life is not good, then euthanasia is the best option. In fact, if I'm going to say a weakness, my own answer there, I've not talked about quality of life very much, okay? Then I may uh, suggest that quality of life should always be the deciding deciding factor. Uh, as they may say that suffering and pain can be avoided with, I know it's going to go, so I'm going to go to the next page, with euthanasia and no one should have to suffer. Oh man, unnecessarily. Oh, no, that's definitely wrong. Don't necessarily, necessarily. I don't know. Definitely wrong. I don't trust myself at all now. Um, as they do not believe in God, they may uh, see the end of their life as their own choice as they have free will about how to live and also how they should die. Uh, there you go. Not bad. I mean, once again, I'm not saying this is going to be a perfect answer. I'm doing this very late at night inside Minecraft, but I, I think this would be a fairly good answer for you to put together. Oh, my Lord, my television's going to turn itself off because it's been on for over two hours. That's how long it's taken me to do this. Okay, then I'm going to throw in a conclusion, okay? Uh, overall, I uh, believe that euthanasia, uh, euthanasia uh, should... Oh, my Lord. Right. I wrote something on page 22 about the, that, so I'm going to have to do a shorter conclusion. That's funny. Uh, euthanasia should... Uh, should be allowed if the oh hang on is that right? Am I writing in the right place? Uh, uh, should uh, no, not should be allowed. Um, what was the question? Uh, euthanasia is the best option when qual quality. Oh, I don't should be a to Q there, uh, but I've, I'm not going back. Quality of life is low as um, it should be a person's personal choice um, and uh, some Christians may support this idea through Jesus' teaching of love, quotation marks, Minton, Love thy neighbour, um, which would suggest that uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. that. Why is my brain blanked out completely? Because I'm so tired. Uh, that respecting someone's uh, choices is a good. A good deed. Okay, I mean, it's not the best answer at the end there. I've got too tired and confused, but I, I think you'd get a decent mark for that. And I do apologise, it's not my best work. Um, so, you know, you can see there's a decent argument for euthanasia there. I really, I mean, I, I got one question dead on on the last exam, the baptism question. I could see euthanasia being something like this. I mean, it might not be as quality of quality of life is not good, then euthanasia is the best uh, option. I thought the questions were relatively fair on the first exam. It may be something as simple as 
euthanasia is always wrong, and then you can just argue euthanasia is wrong, euthanasia is right. That would be the best question, okay? I mean, the abortion question from a couple of years ago was abortion should only be allowed when the mother's life is at risk, which does feel more like this sort of question, okay? And it... It does feel like this, as in, like they've put like a little twist on it to make it slightly more complicated. They didn't just say in two thousand and nineteen, "Oh, abortion is wrong." They put abortion should only be allowed when the mother's life at risk to really separate those people going for those top end grades and go. Can you focus on this question? Which, in all fairness, I don't think I've done well enough in this one. Um, I may be being a little harsh on myself, but I don't. I don't know if I'd give that twelve marks. Um, I certainly will give it for that because that's on the wrong topic now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still a certainly decent answer. I'd be very disappointed if it got anything too low. Um, even if you hopefully are not doing your exams in such a state of mental befuddlement as I am. Once again, as always, if you have any questions that you'd like me to do over 12 markers, I will try and get to them. If you're like, oh, I'm really worried about 12 marker on environment or revolution, I will try and do a live stream at some point. Um, before the exam, maybe Wednesday night. Um, I'll have to move my laptop somewhere and I've got to work out how to put this onto my laptop, but it will give me a bit of flexibility. I've worked out recently how I can export this world and hopefully play it on my laptop, which would be useful. Doesn't You don't need to know that. Anyway, any questions, pop them into the chat. Um, once again, I'm trying to get back on schedule, so that should mean Sunday, Monday, theme D, uh, and then Tuesday, and I might have to do uh, Sunday, and then... Yeah, Tuesday I might have to do all of theme E in one big go. So theme E might be one big video, giving me Wednesday a night to do that. But theme E, I think, can be done in one big video, okay? Um, yeah, there's all the quotes there. I mean, I wonder if there's a way of actually, like, letting you lot have this so you could open it up in your own Minecraft games. I don't really know how that all works. If anyone knows if that's a possibility, so you could revise in here on your own on Wednesday night, let me know and I'll find a way of doing that, I suppose. I don't know if that's really possible. Anyway... Good luck in any exams you have on Monday before um, before you have RE. Uh, and otherwise, let me know in the comments if there's anything you need me to cover.